Today we're going to be talking about Fox Body sway bars, specifically the front sway bar. And in my experience, this is one of the most commonly overlooked suspension components in these cars, especially when they've been lowered. Today I'm going to show you how people screw this up, how cheap and easy it is to rectify it, and get your car riding the way that it should be. Sway Bar 101. This is your sway bar. Now this is an OEM sway bar that would have come on this LX hatch from the factory. You can get bigger ones, you can get smaller ones. There's a lot of science behind sway bars that will not be the purpose of this video. I'm more or less gonna show you how a sway bar should be set up so it correctly does its job. You can see here, this car has been lowered. It's got a set of lowering springs on it. I don't know if these are motorsport springs or what. All I know is the geometry of this car has been changed from OEM spec, right? It's now lower by say an inch and a half. Come over here to the bench, you'll see that this car was running OEM length sway bar end links, which is not good because the geometry of the front end of this car has been changed by lowering it and therefore the geometry of this sway bar and how it's set up should be changed as well. You can see the top end of this sway bar, the end link bolts in here and comes down to your control arm. What you must have happen, regardless of aftermarket bigger sway bars or smaller or whatever, what you need to remember is the end of this bar needs to be parallel with your lower control arm. So with this car running the stock length and links in lowered format, what was going on here is this bar was way up here like this, okay? And that bar will not do its job as intended when it's set up like that. It needs to be in parallel format, somewhere down in and around here, all right? And that's because the geometry of the suspension has changed since lowering it. That is why you need to run a shorter end link. Not to mention the fact that these aftermarket, in this case, they're energy suspension. Prothane makes a set like this too. They run a polyurethane bushing, which essentially gives you a stiffer feel um, versus these rubber, like OEM style comfort bushings. They also have this sleeve, okay, which essentially just strength, strengthens the end link. Now, here you can see a set of bushings. Up here, these look to be the original bushings that this car came with. Not only are they shot, but OEM bushings are more of a rubber. They're kind of built for more of a comfort ride overall, right? And uh, they, they wear out over time. So, Today, we're gonna to be changing those out, and we're also going to be putting in a proper set of end links to correct all this geometry, such that this sway bar can go back to doing its job. out now be forewarned ladies and gents the bolts that hold your sway bar up to your frame rails can be rather tight I had the DeWalt impact on eat <laughs> and yeah they get rusty and corroded and whatever they do come out um, just you know be ready for a little bit of a fight and now if you're sway bar's never been out there's typically this like metal kind of speed nut system that sits on top and the theory is it holds your nut in place while your bolt gets spun into it and you don't need to put a wrench on it these ones had been changed at some point because they had this like 
plastic system on them and plastic on metal especially when it's corroded won't last very long so there's pieces of plastic shrapnel all over my shop floor i just busted them off that's why i dropped the car down busted them off with a flat blade and then i could get a wrench on top of them anyway take your time they will come out but here she is and now i've already pried one of the brackets off of the rubber here um this one's shot it's not as bad as the other one but uh this guy here i mean she's totally clapped out you know so anyway what you got to do is just get a flat blade or a punch or something in there and you kind of pry in between here and this will pop out and then cut the old ones off slide the new ones on i'll show you how to do all that because there is a bit of a lubrication process they give you some wiener slider to get on uh, the inside of your bushings right so we'll do that i might actually clean this guy up real quick and slap a coat of paint on him because he is looking quite shabby so i'll do that and then we'll uh we'll slide the new bushings on and get her back up in place and then get our end links on <music> All right, so I know a lot of you are probably going like, what in the hell was he using to clean that thing up with? And sparks were flying or whatever. This is just a 80 grit like flapper wheel, okay? I'm by no means like grinding with a grinding disc to get this thing cleaned up. I'm just kind of knocking off the slag and years and years of road grime and whatever else. So here she is ready for a coat of paint. I don't think I'm gonna do anything fancy, just splash some black on it the biggest thing i want to point out here is like where those bushings ride can like pretty much get impregnated with rubber so i really spent some time cleaning those up so now we've got a, a good clean smooth or smoother surface for the new polyurethane bushings to ride on so pay attention to that I mean, if you're not gonna go to the, the lengths that I have to clean the whole thing up, at the very least, just get this surface that your new mounts are gonna, or bushings are gonna ride on, because uh, that's where it counts. All right, we're all painted up and ready to rock. And now I mentioned earlier the uh, Wiener Schleider, AKA <laughs> Formula 5 Pre-Lube. So lube up the inside of your new um, bushing, okay? And there's kind of a, a groove in there that all this lube's gonna work its way into. So doctor those guys up, and then uh, you've probably seen, but the, these have a split in them uh, right here, which is nice. You don't got to force feed them off the uh, or from the one end of your sway bar. Okay. That guy right there. folks we're in and now i just want to well obviously show you what it all looks like completed but i also want to leave you with a couple of closing thoughts so i've put my end links in and now something to keep in mind is these end links are there's a half an inch difference that you can play with just by orienting the polyurethane bushings differently so I've ran these in the smallest or the shortest format that this set allows me to. And uh, 
How I've done that is I've used the shorter of the polyurethane bushings on the top side and the longer down below and on top, okay? So I'll show you on the box here. Uh, you can see here, five and a quarter and five and three quarter inch. So they are adjustable within those parameters and your situation might be a little different than, than mine. Um, every lowering kit's a little different and you need, the bottom line is you need to make sure that the end of your sway bar is parallel with that lower control arm, okay? And I hope that I can give you that view so you can see that we have accomplished that. Um, the other thing is when you're tightening these down, you do not need to squash these polyurethane bushings out or if you're using like OEM replacements with rubbers you don't need to pancake these I see it all the time people just wail away on this nut on the bottom here and it is a lock nut too okay so like it the whole theory behind a lock nut is it locks itself in place so don't go crazy okay you'll hear these things start to squeak and get tight and like just stop there okay don't under tighten them but by, by all means, do not over tighten, all right? You're defeating the purpose of those bushings if you do. So that is how it looks all completed. Okay, folks, and just in closing, I'm gonna leave you with some links below for the end links I used in the bushings. Just know that there are different brands. You know, these are energy suspension, there's Prothane. There's probably ones out there that I don't even know about. And or there's OEM replacements if you're not lowered, okay? The only reason we went with shorter end lengths is because this car is lowered. And I'm not gonna drone on, but just make sure that your sway bar is parallel with your lower control arm, okay? Anyway, I hope this video helped you out, guys. If it did, please share it along. That's why I do these videos to give back and help the community. So thanks so much for tagging along. I really appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care, bye for now.